Okay. Yes. Um, let's start our music. Um, what do we have for today? Oh, yeah. wait for class to wake up. The wake up class. And uh, welcome to Galois theory class. Morning class. Mornings are difficult for everyone, but just come on in and uh, we'll continue our, our story. Hi, Psyche, how's it going? Psy pet, hello. We're in the beginning easy part of the semester where we're just kind of going through things that we mostly uh, might have already known Last class, we proved the fundamental theorem of algebra. Not even really a theorem in algebra, but its statement says something about the complex numbers, which is an algebraic statement. That the complex numbers are algebraically closed. So when you think about, um, hey, Femvox, how's it going? So when you think about the evolution, the story of evolution of numbers, in a certain sense, the complex numbers were kind of like an end of the road, an end, an end of a road. Got to use my words carefully. Um, that was what we did yesterday. Uh, I fixed a issue in the proof in the book, but uh, most of it is fine okay so today what we're gonna do is um, talk about kind of boring stuff about polynomial rings but very important moving forward and we've seen most of this stuff last semester okay so it's gonna be mostly like a review type uh, day but I do want to sort of go over it again so that people the main ingredients of what you need to know about polynomial rings are sort of forward in our minds as we go forward here. Forward twice in this sentence. Okay, so uh, the content is chapter three. It's a very easy, mild chapter, review type chapter. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna break it up into three things as I usually try to do. 
Uh, the first thing is I'll just say some random comments about uh, fields. Then we'll talk we'll talk about polynomial rings and specific facts about them. Okay, great. Um, so throughout, I want you to always go back to the three sentences of Galois theory and kind of mm, situate our current discussion in the three sentences somewhere. And as we go, the sentences will become um, more and more uh, vibrant. Okay, good. So, um, fields. Now the book does something funny. It's, it's good, okay? The book basically does Galois theory twice. First for, we might call concrete fields. Fields which are subfields of the complex numbers. Uh, uh, sorry, Psych. There's no. We're, uh, you think you think this? We've got our stuff together here, Psych. What is that? What is that text? No. Okay. So um, the book. Let's. I mean, I'm just going to talk about fields for a second. Um, you should know what a field is. It's a a field is a ring. A com all rings are commutative with unit. Um, where all non-zero elements have a multiplicative inverse, meaning units. And uh, for troll, uh, oh, why is my pen gray? Okay, so for uh, troll uh, examples, we don't consider the zero ring at all uh, to be a field, so the zero ring which I think last semester we called the wrong, <laughs> uh, is, is not a field. You have to have one not equal to zero in a field. In other words, a community ring where you can do division for every non-zero element. Boom. Easy. Okay? But the book decides to start um, by uh, for concreteness, for people who don't appreciate abstract fields yet, which we will eventually, um, for concreteness, we're going to just talk about subfields of the complex number. So in the beginning half, um, we will only talk about subfields of the complex numbers just for concreteness. All right. So let me show you an example of a, oh, and the letter for a field will typically be capital K and capital L and letters close to the K in, in the alphabet for whatever reason, okay? I don't know why not F, but whatever. Okay, so um, for example, Q is a, is a field, a subfield of C. Um, Q adjoin the square root of two, which just means right now is, well, it always will mean this. Um, rational number plus a rational number times the square root of two. Just because I write something down as a subset doesn't mean it's a field, subfield, or even a subring. So you have to check that this thing is a subfield. Okay, so check. How do you divide? That's the issue. That if you do this, it's also something time plus something times the square root of two with two funny rational numbers. Figure out that you can always do that. This is called um rationalizing the denominator or some garbage like that something like that okay so q adjoined the square root of two is an example of a subfield of c right um real numbers form a subfield of c of course um what other examples there's an example in the homework you should definitely try hard on that example i think i gave it in the homework which is something called Q adjoined the cube root of two, which as a set is A's plus B times the cube root of two plus C's times the cube root of four, which is just uh, another name of saying cube root of two all squared. The puzzle, of course, the difficulty here is to see why one over such a number is again Expre re expressible as a sum, a linear, a Q linear combination of one, 
square root of two, uh, cube root of two and cube root of four. Okay, this is an a, an interesting. You probably, if you haven't seen this stuff, this is probably an interesting one to puzzle. See if you fi can figure out how to divide. It's, I think it, I I hope I assigned it as a homework problem due on Sunday. Okay, so um, this is another funny fun example. But there are all kinds of subfields of C. And in some sense, our study, Galois theory, is to kind of understand the um, constellation of subfields of C, where we think of inclusion as the, just the constellation of all subfields of C. We'll do an in-depth study of the, those. That's what the subject's going to be about in the concrete half of the book. Okay. But, but what we're now going to talk about is facts about polynomial rings over arbitrary fields. Whatever we say now is going to be true about arbitrary fields, not just the concrete ones, which are fields of certain kinds of complex numbers. All right, there's other kinds of fields out in the world. Let me show you an example of such a field, um, bizarre ones, from the point of view of the book, meaning, right, bizarre, bizarre. Like Z mod uh, 11Z, for example, which we're going to start writing as F sub 11 to emphasize that it's a field. The finite field, a finite field with 11 elements, F sub 11, that's how we'll say it. That thing's not a subfield of the complex numbers because it has characteristic 11 and the complex numbers have characteristic 0. So you can't have, keep adding 1, you're never going to get 0. In the complex numbers so this is a this is an abstract field out in the ether somewhere not inside the ambient cozy home of the complex numbers okay good that's just comments from the uh, to explain to you what the book is trying to do all right so now let's begin uh, polynomial rings yet okay um are we doing that special polynomial you will get the special polynomials uh, soon. Okay. All right. Um, but I need to do this, um, this boring material first. It's, it's not boring. It's, it's just repeated from last semester. So polynomial rings, you know what a polynomial ring is. So polynomial ring means in one variable, over another ring is just, I mean, it's denoted like this. And what it is, is it's a set of just formal polynomial expressions where the coefficients are in your starting ring R. Let me write it uh, with, agree with the notation of the book. I think, I think they use A's and B's. Uh, let's just go with it here. All right. And how do you add? You add. How do you multiply? Multiply. There, done. Just like foil or whatever it's called. Okay. That forms a new ring. Um, and what we're going to be interested in is the very important special situation when the, the ground ring, the ring of coefficients is a field. So then we get this notation, or Q adjoint T, or uh, C adjoint T, or R adjoint T, etc. Okay, so this is, this is the general notation. Because when the coefficient ring is a field, many great things are true about the polynomial ring. All right? So when the coefficient field, coefficient ring is a field, then great things happen. And the reason why great things happen, there's two main reasons why great things happen. The first thing, first ingredient of the great things happen is the concept of degree. And the second thing that comes after the concept of degree is something called division with remainder also known as the division algorithm or long division 
or division with remainder. These two things kind of together conspire to uh, to to explain basically all the um, algebraic properties, all the ring theoretic properties of the um, uh, poly of polynomial rings over a field. Okay, so what's the degree? The degree of a polynomial is the largest power of t that occurs in the expression. Okay, that's the degree. All right, and so let's uh, let me say some basic things about the degree. So degree. Uh, the book uses some fancy notation, like delta or something to denote the degree of a polynomial. So if f is a polynomial, then the degree of f, which I'll just say this, I mean, why not? Degree of f is just n. Okay, great. I did take off the, the black wig, yeah. I, I took that, took off the black wig, that's right. Okay, so the degree of f is just n. Uh, the, the, that thing. Now, when you have a very nice type of coefficient ring, in particular fields will satisfy this, then the degree satisfies a great property. Easy to show, of course. This is very simple. Now, if um, we're looking at a polynomial ring, and if you know that R is an integral domain, so that includes fields. Integral domain means that if a times b equals zero in the ring, then a or b had to be zero. That's the zero divisor um, requirement for an integral domain. Fields satisfy this. The integers satisfy this too, etc. You 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 know you know an integral domain when you see one. All right. So if you have an integral domain. Of coefficients then you get the degree of a product is the sum of the two degrees all right now I don't know what convention the book uses for the degree of the zero polynomial and I kind of don't care about that you shouldn't bother about these things either all right you see lots of pop psi math uh discussions on the internet that talk at length about these things complete waste of time all right these are just people who just i don't know what they do okay but let's get to the content right some people will say the degree of the zero polynomial is negative one others will say negative infinity maybe there's better Com completely dumb conversation all right Put it, it's some terrible thing, okay? Just uh, whatever. All right, so whatever makes this formula work, make that the convention. I think negative infinity is what makes this formula work out. Whatever, who cares? Okay, so why is this true? The, the reason why this is true is that when you, div when you multiply two polynomials, all you gotta, so the point is the focus on the top the only way you get the highest degree term in the product. And that's if the a n, that's exactly the a n times b m. So you're gonna get all this stuff. Well, we know what the, okay, the constant, the way to get the constant term is very simple. But then to get the t term, you have to do some cross and a1 b0 plus b1, ah, it gets complicated. But then the very last term is very simple. And you see, the you'll if a n and b m are non-zero, which when you write a polynomial like this out, you are basic you are assuming that a n and b m are non-zero. Otherwise, why did you write it like this? Okay? Then if they're non-zero, then their product will stay non-zero, thanks to the assumption that the coordinate the coefficient ring is integral domain. And that's why the degree formula works. Okay, so if you have some weird coefficient ring like z mod 4z, 
you can violate this degree um, uh, this degree property. Great. Okay, so degree works like this. The degree of a sum of two polynomials is not anything particularly predictable. All you can really say is that the degree of the sum or difference, of course, is at most the degree of the biggest one, the biggest degree. of the two. That's all you can say, right? Go and look at some examples. The top terms can cancel. All right, good. So that's the great thing about polynomial rings, say, over a field. The degree concept, multiplication predicts a sum of the two the degree adds. Now, the second thing is the division algorithm. Stuart said degree is zero, is it negative infinity? Great, okay, wonderful. Um, oh, I thought that was a TA. Nope, that was me with a wig. All right, so division algorithm. What is the division algorithm? It's just saying that long division produces a well-defined quotient plus, and then a well-defined remainder. There's a, a unique quotient and remainder output when you do long division. All right, so when you state it in a th like a statement, it looks like this. Um, suppose uh, f and g are two polynomials, and I think let's suppose g is not zero. Not the zero polynomial, where it's just zeros, okay? Um, then, uh, there's a unique pair of polynomials, Q and R, such that um, f equals g times q plus r and such such that it, one and two the degree of r is strictly less than the degree of g right that's what makes it a remainder it's less than the than the thing you're trying to divide by so the, the thing you're trying to do is the way you think about this is this okay look like this i didn't specify what field i was in so i just stuck a pie in there just so to to make you ha unhappy all right or just make a three i here whatever Okay, so some field, we're in some subfield of C. We're in C, let's just say. Okay. All right, so um, how do you proceed with this division? You focus on the highest degree term that's kind of available, and then you keep going. So you're going to get the Q part, and then you're going to get a, and then you're going to get a remainder at the very end. Subtract, subtract. Oh my god, a remainder. This is the R. You stop exactly when uh, the subtraction remainder stuff has smaller degree than, in this case, 2. Because then you can't divide in to that thing. All right? Now, let me, let me emphasize why we have a division algorithm when the coefficient ring is a field now. It's because... This could have happened. This could have been a 7, and this could have been a 4. And how do you get into that 7? How do you obtain the 7 coefficient? You have to do 4 inverse times 7. You have to divide out by the 4 and then multiply by a 7 to get to 7. 
All right, so that's why you need the flexibility of division in the co coefficients of the polynomial. All right, so that's why the division algorithm is there only, let's say, um, th th it's very important that the coefficient be a field now for this to be a true state, for this to actually be a fact. Okay, like there is no real, there is no division algorithm for like um, polynomial ring in two variables, for example. All right, where k can be, instead of k, I'm doing c adjoin x and then adjoin t. Just c adjoin x and t. Okay, so division with remainder exists. So how, how does this proof go? It's easy. The proof goes by existence and then uniqueness. The uniqueness will be by the degree um, considerations. Existence is kind of just saying, do, it's just saying that you can do the division, long division, and at some stage, the remainder stuff will have to have smaller degree than the, the thing you're dividing by. Because at each stage, the degree of the remainder keeps getting, is a smaller and smaller number. All right, so the point is, you just write out what happens in long division in a proof style, in the style of a proof or an argument, and pay attention to the argument, it's just going to say that the degree of the remainder stuff keeps dropping. And if you ever have a polynomial rem a remainder where, which has degree bigger than or equal to 2 here, you can still divide out, thanks to the ability to divide out by this coefficient, kind of match coefficients. So that's the reason why such an expression exists. And then uniqueness is a degree um, argument as well. You put two expressions and you subtract them. Okay, so that's the um, that's the division algorithm, and it's the it's the main thing from which all other nice properties of uh, a polynomial ring over a field emerge. All right, so the division algorithm essentially explains. Um, most, if not all, I will just say all, nice properties, nice algebraic properties of the, of a polynomial ring. All right, from last semester, for example, um, one particular property is that the polynomial ring in one variable over a field is a principal ideal domain. And what does that mean? It means that every ideal in this ring is principal. What does that mean? An ideal, remember, a subset of a ring, this is a, just a review aside, a review really, a subset of a ring is called an ideal if it's closed under addition and closed under arbitrary outside any multiplication in the ambient ring. So in other words, for any element in the ideal and any element in the ring, R times I is in I again. Okay? Hey, RB tree, how's it going? A Notharian ring? E yes, smash that tool. Yes, it is a Notharian ring. Yes. So I have to. Actually, this is. Yeah, okay. Anyway. All right. So every ideal is principal. 
but I don't know if he's trolling or what. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me explain why this is cool. Uh, the book doesn't go down this route. We've already, this is the power of sort of streamlining parts of the of algebra. So um, what is this? This is, what is the principal ideal? Oh, what's a principal ideal? A principal ideal is an ideal of the form parentheses little r. By that, or just let me put it, it does not to confuse your confuse you with the remainder from the division algorithm. Principal ideal generated by a single element is just all all multiples of that element. Okay, simplest kind of ideal you can ever write in a ring. Just take an element and take all multiples of it. All right. Okay, smash time. Oh, Crow, we need more mods like him? Is that you plugging that you want to be a mod? Is that is that you basically asking, right? You're just like, I mean, is that what's going on here, Crow? Okay. Great. So, um, here's the division algorithm will prove, can be used very simply to prove that Every ideal conceivable in a principal in a polynomial ring is actually secretly a principal ideal. All right. So what does this kind of what what does this if you believe this about um, the polynomial ring like what does it immediately get give rise to? So um, assuming we know that or we remember that this is a PID. Um, you could, you can sort of more elegantly uh, define some notions that had that looked like they had very particular specific definitions. For example, the concept of the highest common factor of a or of a highest common factor of two polynomials, which you'll see in the chapter. So, so, so for example, suppose f and g are two polynomials. All right, then you can define the a highest common factor in the following way. First, create the ideal, which is f comma g. This is the set of all ring theoretic combinations of f and g. This is obviously an ideal inside of the polynomial ring. Now, if you know that the polynomial ring is a principal ideal domain, thank you, Crow. If you know that it's a principal ideal domain, then this ideal is somehow secretly that this ideal is secretly the ideal consisting of all multiples of some mysterious one particular polynomial. Or H, call it H. There exists an H inside the ring such that the set of combination polynomials of F and G is actually the same exact subset as the set of all multiples of one particular polynomial. And here's an interesting definition. This is this H would then be a highest common factor of F and G. Okay, why? Why? Okay, so suppose you know that the set of all F, uh, AF combinations of F and G is this, um, is actually this principal ideal generated by one element, one mysterious element. How to find it? We'll talk about in a second. Okay, suppose you know this. 
then if um yeah f g h uh if uh, p okay if p of f if p of t divides both f and g then p of t of course divides every single expression of this form In this ideal but if this ideal is the multiples of h h is in particular in this ideal so what we see if we have if we know this equation equality then any any common factor of f and g must divide h but in the opposite direction, H itself has to divide both F and G. Also notice, H itself divides both F and G in this situation. Because 1 times F plus 0 times G is inside of this ideal. And we're, we're saying this ideal is principal. And so F is a multiple of H. For some polynomial A. Okay? So H is a common factor of F and G. And H is the greatest common factor in the sense that any other common factor, any other common factor must also divide into H. So in the, using the sort of simplicity of principal ideal domains, the lesson is you get the notion of a common factor, of, of a highest common factor. It's simply you take the two elements, take the ideal generated by them, it's secretly principal, circle a generator. Okay? Two generators of the same principal ideal must differ by a unit. Let's look at that. That's why we say a highest common factor. The same principal ideal. Differ by a unit. Mm. Differ meaning multiplicatively. Mm. Oh. Okay, so let's see. Suppose h equals h prime. Okay? Two, two polynomials. Let's do be specific. Then h equals um, h prime times something s, and h prime equals h times something. I'm just uh, doing the by the definition. All right. But now, if you like combine these carefully. You'll get like h equals h times s times t. And in an integral domain, you can cancel. In other words, s and also t were units. Okay? So that's the... Um, uh, that's why we use the word a highest common factor. So to summarize, the division algorithm explains why k adjoint t is a principal ideal domain. I'll go through that super fast right here in a second. But if you buy that, then concepts like highest common factor are just formal consequences of being a principal ideal domain. Namely, you take two elements, two polynomials. The ideal they generate is secretly principal. A generator of that principal ideal is a highest common factor. Amazing. Now, how do you find it in life? Well, I'll show you an algorithm called Euclid's Euclidean algorithm. But that it's there is simply a formal consequence of principal ideal domain. Okay, so why is k adjoint t a principal ideal domain in 10 seconds?
Okay? So you suppose you have an ideal. Then, thankfully, uh, thanks to the concept of degree, the key step, and then I'll let you try to figure out what to do with this thing. The key step is to choose a polynomial in this ideal which has smallest degree. And then, using the division algorithm, you argue that every element in this ideal has to be a multiple of h. Okay, so that's everything in I is a multiple of H. Now, you also have to prove that um, every multiple of H, oh, that's obvious. Every multiple of H is also contained in I because I is closed under arbitrary multiplication. That's stupid. All right, so this is all you need to do. All right, so the key is to notice the role played by degree and division algorithm. Those are the two heroes of a polynomial ring. All right, GCD is HCF. Yes, I'm using HCF just so the, the two students are in agreement with the book, just the language in the book. But it's important that you talk about an HCF because HCFs differ by units, All right? Highest common factors. But I wanna to emphasize to my students that this is all not specific to a polynomial ring, it's specific to a principal ideal domain, which there are way, it's a more general situation. And when you know you're facing a more general situation in math, it's good to know that because it actually um, downgrades, it's, it actually um, makes the statement a little bit less surprising. It's sort of more universal. More universal, kind of less scary. Good. Okay, great. So, polynomial rings, because of the division algorithm and the concept of degree, are a principal ideal domain. From last semester, you saw that principal ideal domains are also unique factorization domains. Meaning, like the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, that every integer is a unique product of irreducible integers, prime integers. Same kind of situation for polynomial rings. Every polynomial is uniquely writable as a product of irreducible polynomial equations. What's an irreducible polynomial? One that doesn't factor in any interesting way as a product of two polynomials. Constants don't count. Okay, so you get all that for free thanks to the division algorithm combined with the concept of degree. All right, so um, going slower than I thought I would go. But it's supposed to be review, so you should, this should all kind of remind you of last semester. Um, I got to degree, division algorithm. Now I'm going to tell you, talk about the concept of the, a root of a polynomial. It's just a word. And uh, Gauss's, and then Gauss's lemma, which is from last semester. So if I, uh, maybe I'll just say a couple words in, on Friday's class about that. But uh, roots, of, I want to emphasize one thing about the concept of a root of a polynomial because it's part of our story. It's fundamental in our story. Okay. Okay. So, um, suppose just words. So we agree on words. If uh, F is a polynomial, then um, a root of f in k is um, an element such that f of alpha equals zero. Okay, so f, this is a boom, boom, boom. 
It's just something that when you plug it in, you get zero. Okay, obvious definition. All right. Um, so what's the main thing to know about roots? Main thing is, if alpha is a root, then the polynomial t minus alpha has to divide um, f. Why? Division algorithm. Because f is then t minus alpha times some polynomial plus a remainder which is smaller degree than t minus alpha, so it's a constant. This is just a constant, meaning it's just an element in k. But now f of alpha, f with t equals alpha plugged in, is 0. So, of course, when you plug alpha in, this part goes away. And so this constant has to be the zero constant. And that's what we're saying. So if, you ha if you're witnessing a root of a polynomial, you are actually witnessing a factor of that polynomial of the form t minus alpha. Easy, completely obvious fact. All right, and from this fact, we see, in particular, a polynomial, a degree n polynomial, over a field, that just means coefficients in a field, can have at most n roots. in that field. All right? Be because the degree of the of the of the quotient is strictly smaller. And so you just the degree of the quotient is you then you know, you you factor out one t minus alpha, one root, you get something else. And you factor out if you, if that new thing has a root, factor it out. You can't the degree strictly de decreases thanks to the degree properties, all right? And so a, that's just an observation to see that a degree n polynomial over a field can have at most n roots, all right? And now um, I want to tie this up with uh, fundamental theorem of algebra as stated last class. So now go back to last class. What we proved there is that any polynomial, any non-constant polynomial, I know I'm over time, just go home and watch these last few sentences at home. Any non-constant polynomial, um, P of Z, for some reason we like to put Z in the, as complex coefficient, uh, uh, variable, whatever. Any non-constant polynomial has a root in C. Okay, celebrated theorem, due in, originally to Gauss, the proof, a uh, uh, real proof, due to Gauss. Okay, but what does this also say? It says that um, this also implies, thanks to how roots correspond to linear factors, it also says that every complex polynomial factors completely into a product of linear factors. Okay, it also says, yeah, every, every complex polynomial factors completely into linear factors. Why? Because we know P of Z has a root. So you get T minus alpha times P1 of T. P1 of Z is P of Z. Sorry. We get that. 
But then this has a root. So t minus alpha one, you know, alpha zero of whatever, etc. You can keep going, applying the um, uh, fundamental theorem to the quotient each time, and you get that every polynomial splits, we'll say splits when this happens, completely linear, product of linear factors, all right? So it's not just that every non-constant polynomial has one root, all of its roots are complex. Okay, so that's the, um, uh, I just wanted to point that out, that these little simple facts get you from the statement that it has one complex root to all of its roots are complex. And it completely splits into a product of linear factors, every single polynomial. Okay, great. So we'll keep talking about uh, some final uh, polynomial -y things uh, next class, in particular the, the topics that I avoided, uh, that I didn't get to, um, like Gauss's lemma, it's a review. The next class is just going to talk about Gauss's lemma. I need to tell you a method for figuring out a highest common factor. That seems like a fun thing to do, and I'm going to, uh, your next week's homework assignment is going to have problems like that, so you'll get practice with it. It's called the Euclidean algorithm. It's boring. Okay, so that's that. And then, um, uh, how do you know whether a polynomial is irreducible or not? Can't be factored further. That's a discussion we had last semester. Well, uh, I'll just go over the basically only two ideas that uh, anyone really knows of checking whether a, a random polynomial with rational coefficients or integer coefficients is irreducible or not. Kind of um, difficult problem. Um, not surprisingly difficult. It's not surprising that it's a difficult problem, but that's what I have to cover uh, on Friday, starting on Friday. So this will, these two things combined will be topic number one. And then we'll move on to the true material that's going to come in this course, which is the concept of a field extension. That's chapter four. So that's what uh, my plan is for um, Friday. Okay, now I'll look at this degenerate chat here. Um, Smash Time Fools is a wonderful person. Um, are A and B polynomials too? Yes, exactly right. Exactly right. A and B inside of R. Oh, R is an arbitrary ring. Um, in, sometimes it was an arbitrary ring, and then sometimes it was exactly the ring K adjoined T. But the point was that some of these facts are true about just general principle ideal domains. I just called it an R. Um, and it's important to realize that certain notions like highest common factor, they're not specific really to polynomial ring or integers. They're actually specific to the, a concept called a principle ideal domain. And that's broader. And it's, that means it's easier, uh, more general, less real content. Okay, great. Um, okay, credits, and then uh, I have to figure out what I'm teaching for commutative algebra. Okay, um, I'll keep looking. Yeah, I gotta see who was here, who came to class. Let's see, who made it to credits today? Okay, who wants to be in credits? Who's this? Put me in too. Okay, Crow wants to be in the credits. Good. Crow. Awesome, you made it to the credits. Uh, honorable mention to um, Lila Lilac. New person, I never heard of you. Uh, new person. Who are you? I'm not sure. Welcome. Oh, okay. It's a, it's a backwards trick. Oh, nice. Very cool. Hey, FemVox. FemVox is improving. It came at the beginning of class. Yeah, look at that. I can see 
Yep. And uh, then didn't chat for a while, so probably fell asleep. And then woke up and said, algebra is lovely. Amazing. Right? So there it is. Um, let's see. Smash time was here. Um, just was banning people left and right who were trolling. Amazing. Um, let's see. Procrastidigitation. Yes. Um, who are these people? Pro okay, well, there's Procrast. Procrast. Psypet. Psych. One. You, I noticed. I noticed uh, NC was here. NC is a streamer. Yo, check out NC. Non-dairy neutrino. That's their actual name. Check them out. Um, RB tree. Ancient tree. One of the oldest trees on Twitch. Hello, RB tree. Um, good to see you. And... Uh, I wonder if Arbitree is a family member because they've been here from the beginning, you know, and it's not clear why they keep coming back. It's, it's so, so, so uh, sweet of them. Okay. Hey, who's this? Um, what horse is this? Well, this was Galois Theory just an hour ago. Um, yeah, so it's Galois Theory. The theory of uh, how to systematically introduce new numbers, which are solutions of polynomials. Two old numbers. Uh, most one of the uh, most beautiful gems in mathematics. This 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 story. Okay, so we just did. We had to do some boring preparation stuff in the early weeks so that we have our language and understanding of polynomial rings down, and then we can start. Which will start maybe um, end of next lecture. I'll introduce the concept of an extension of two fields, one field by another. Gouda education. All right. Um, how does Arbitree get special treatment, but not me or Smash Time? Smash Time fools get special treatment. You see, this is the this is the um, uh, mod corner. You see, Crow, you're over here in the just uh, normal. This is just the normal people. See, so Smash Time got uh, got their uh, attention, their special attention. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Wait a second. What happened there? Oh, someone followed. Okay. Um, so maybe, maybe if you had some some additional something, Crow, maybe, maybe then you'd get. Uh, you know, you know how it works, Crow. But I don't see anything. You know, I don't see that happening. Yo, Carrot Cat. Ancient Carrot Cat is from I think the first COVID class that uh, where this stream was born. That was the first one, or maybe it was the second one. Could have been. It was either the spring semester or the su summer. I think actually summer. No, I don't remember. But yeah, summer, really early. Yo, Gouda. Yeah, I forgot Gouda. Hey. Everyone, check out uh, Gouda is a streamer, and Gouda analyzes everyone else except for themselves. It's like a Russell's paradox type thing. You know the the barber who cuts your hair if, only if you don't cut your own or something like this. This is Gouda. He'll go around criticizing everybody. You know, like oh, let's go check out so-and-so education streamer and then he'll put it in the thing and then he'll analyze it for like hours like oh look at this this is something good this is something bad look at that uh, exercise thing there bad uh this is good this uh mm, button didn't button the shirt all the way mm, bad four hours of that for each streamer doesn't criticize themselves have you noticed so go check them out check it follow them just to see whether they will ever do a video about themselves 
do that right now. <laughs> Being normal in group theory is rather rare and crazy. RB3, you're... I've taught you well. Amazing. I'm so proud. Okay, so Gouda gets in here. Uh, that was all a joke, Gouda. I don't know if the German humor, you get the... It's a joke. So, uh, lighten up a little bit. Okay, next. What's going on? Pandemic sneaks in for some dopamine. Okay. Right at the end. Sure. Why not? Okay. Yes, you laughed in German. Good, good, good. I mean, yeah. Is this list of names a hit list? Hey, Shelwin, who are you? W welcome, but who are you? Like, okay, Shelwin comes in, just starts trolling right away. Shelwin. Hmm? Welcome, Shelwin. Good to see you. Oh, three S's. I misspelled your name. No offense. You want a one we <laughs> one v one in math? No, 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 heck no. Um, quantum cauliflower. Quantum cauliflower, cauliflower, and surfing coder. Welcome. What's happening is at the end of class, I I do a credits where I thank the people, three the three people that showed up to class. I thank them. And what happens, like predictably, what happens is I start writing out the credits because, you know, people like the attention. Oh, look, I, you said my name and stuff, right? I start writing it and people's addiction to the dopamine hit comes in. They come from the chicken streams. They come from wherever they're coming from, you know, XQC, wherever they're coming. They come in and they start saying stuff in the chat suddenly. And so I have to keep adding, like, okay, yeah, sure, you were here too, and so on. All right? So that's what's happening, if that made any sense, quantum cauliflower. But you came here for Galois theory? You're, here, you're one hour late, quantum. Watch the VOD, all right? Come an hour early. Quantum. Enjoy the dopamine. Yeah, you made it in the credits, Quantum. A daily reminder that Galois died before a regular student would even study Galois theory. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's incredible. It's true, yes. I just joined because class ended. Awesome. You, you're a VIP, Carrot Cat. You can be, you're, you're allowed here anytime. Um, these other folks, though, these other folks, I don't know. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I'm not contest math smart. I'm okay. I'm okay with it. Like, I can do a contest problem if you give me a day. And if it's like the first couple problems. But uh, no, I'm not like some amazing contest person. No. And besides, nowadays, I focus mainly on uh, research problems, which have a different feeling than a comp contest problem. They're kind of just really long. Test your stamina. Like, years long? It's a different mental exercise um sheer shack yo quantum the graduate class is not gonna be on twitch unfortunately it's um it's i i kind of knew that it was gonna be strange for some of the grad students yeah so yeah they're, yeah, they're they're older, they're sophisticated people. No, they're 
they're not degenerates like us you know so they prefer the, the zoom yeah so no it's a preference makes sense though i do question we tried one class not many questions compared to you degenerates asking questions in chat which i like i like when people ask questions i kind of predictably what happened with the zoom i maybe it'll change is just awkward silence at the end of class like all graduate classes ever so i kind of question uh, the engagement level um, that difference like you know random people like quantum or who are these people like pandemic all these all these folks you know fembox they might ask a question in chat and that will trigger me to say some stuff that i wouldn't necessarily say if it's just a boring silent class which in person classes are boring and silent Carrot Cat swooping in with the teacher's pet because Carrot Cat is the one of the few people that even knows that there's something that you can uh, redeem called teacher's pet. So welcome. Everything you say is great, Carrot Cat. You're the best student ever. Outside five, welcome. Um, okay, yes, it's very sad. Not really. It's just a preference. Though I wonder what will happen to engagement. I can predict. All right. Okay, so let's. You still have thirty k chat points. <laughs> uh, Carrot cat. I don't know. You probably were too busy last semester. Uh, hopefully, you're busy. But last semester, what happened was uh, point, there was a lot of channel point fluctuation because I would juggle five balls and i would say like i would we would do the betting thing with channel points that the new betting feature and we would bet like is am i gonna be able to do 20 throws or 25 throws whatever and uh, some people got really rich and some people lost a lot of channel points from that um gambling phase that we went through but yeah um so yeah you you have uh if you if you uh, you're here during a, a juggling gambling thing, you have some real opportunity there. No, they're not open, Quantum, because the people's faces and stuff uh, not open. Quantum. Yeah, quantum. Okay, great. So, today, polynomial review day. Polynomial rings are principal ideal domains. Out of that emerges a lots of stuff. Where does principal ideal domain condition come in? From division algorithm and the concept of degree. Those two things conspire. Um, to produce the great features of a polynomial ring. Okay. Thank you to all of you, RB, Pro, uh, Lilac, Fanbox Fan, Procrastinator, Psypet, Psych, and C. You changed color? Wait, did it work? Hey, does the changing color work? Try it. Try it, Lilac. Okay. Um, one day we're going to get another surface. I think we should get the Steiner surface. All right. Um, it's just a surface that uh, I've been lecturing about kind of tangentially in uh, a series of videos that I'm trying to make for future algebraic geometry students which has been on hold because I've gotten overwhelmed with refereeing garbage and start of semester garbage. And so we'll start that again, starting Saturday, recording streams. 
Okay. Um. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, the colors don't are not accurate. And hey, Gouda, are you still there? Hey, Gouda, are you there? No, but I'm just gonna say this anyway because you're gonna watch the vod. You're gonna make a whole um, um, seminar about it. So, Gouda, there's nothing special to this setup. All right, this this is a camera pointing at a glass thing. In the glass, using lasers, someone created a surface. So it's not like holographic. And and these cameras, they're complete garbage. And that's some like you, you know, not it's not uh, Professor Melko, you know, new upgrade. You know where it's like I'm I'm focused and everything's blurry. It's blurry because it's just trash. This this webcam. It's a Logitech HD, I mean, I guess, 180p, 10, 1080p, and it's this small, and uh, we found it uh, in a dumpster, probably, somewhere. And similarly for this camera. And that's why the colors don't actually show up perfectly. Like, the thing I see is, like, beautiful gem. And then you look at this thing on the screen and it's like I don't know looks terrible all right uh, you have no idea how special leave the media evaluation to us <laughs> no 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 when you <laughs> when you get when you started going off about the equipment I was laughing so hard. Me and my little brother, who my little brother makes the third eye technology Unity program. We were laughing so hard because it was like, yo, this is this is like the most basic <laughs> camera and this thing. So yeah, completely flopped on that one. Good. Go edit that. Go edit that. All right. Okay, fine. Well, I'll stay in my lane, though. I'll stay in my lane. Okay. Wow, oh, that's nice. We had some ideas. My younger brother had an idea where the color would, um, like, intensify based on my voice. That's something we, we might play around with or try to do. Hey, what is going on here? What is happening? Folks, I think this is an emergency. I think something's happening here. But please remember, in a polynomial ring over a field, you get good properties. Most importantly, it's a principal ideal domain. From that, the rest of the facts about the polynomial ring just kind of pop right out. All right? Okay, so I'm going to have to deal with this. So, hmm, what's going on there? What do I think about piatics? Uh, what kind of question is that? Like, yeah, they're there. They they exist. Is that what you're asking? Do I believe in them? Piatics exist. It's not a conspiracy quantum. They exist. What do you use FFT for? What is FFT? What is F fa fast something? I don't use FFT f for anything. So I don't know. Read the I don't know. I have no idea. All right, Surfing Coder, I'll see you next time. Man, what is this stuff coming out of my wig? I mean, my hair. Okay, no one's gonna watch this part, so. Gouda's gone anyway.
Yeah, yeah, ask Tayo. Tayo will know. Shack. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs>